Hello friends, today is going to be a fun video packed with inspiration. I have 10, that's right I said 10 crafts to make with you using Dollar Tree supplies. All right, now let's get crafting. You will see so many of these type of deers on high-end websites. Pottery Barn, even Target, they sell these for anywhere between $15 to $30. They had them at the Dollar Plus section for $5. So I'm gonna take some of the picks and frosted glitter stems from the Dollar Tree and a piece of this foam square and I'm going to cut it down to size so that I can glue it to the base inside of the deer's legs. Now I'm going to use some E6000 because I don't always trust just hot glue by itself. So I'm going to use my little key tool here. I love this tool. I had a subscriber send it to me a while ago where I can basically just twist it and it'll allow me to always keep the pressure in my E6000 and then I'll be able to, you know, get out the amount I need put the cap back on, add some hot glue, and pop it into place. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take some of these leaves from one of the picks, and I'm gonna kind of build up the base a little bit, because I don't want to see this foam. We wanna make sure we're covering it with as much greenery as we possibly can. So I'm gonna add in first those green leaves, then I'm gonna come in with this silver frosty looking pick, that looks like twigs, but it has glitter. Then I'm gonna add in some frosted berries and some beautiful, vibrant red berries. And anytime the berries get in the way, I do kind of pull a little bit off on the end just to make sure I have a nice, good imprint into the foam and I can hot glue it into place without them popping out over time. Now, this next step is optional. You can put in what, honestly, whatever you want. I am going to be using a pick that I had on hand. It's actually a long garland strand I get from Hobby Lobby whenever they have it on sale for their greenery long garlands. And I'm simply just going to cut off a couple pieces and pop those in because I really love how boxwood looks with Christmas berries and some moss in there. And at this point you can see adding all this extra texture in there really does just bring it to life and makes it look real. I think that's the thing I love most about using faux greenery. When you start blending different types of them together that complement each other, it looks so beautiful and high-end on a strict budget. I'm going to be using this milk jug that I picked up from the Dollar Tree and their Dollar Plus section that was $3. You can find these sometimes at thrift stores, but I love this one because it already had the vinyl work on it. Now we're going to be taking some foam and putting that down in there with some hot glue to secure it into place. And then we're going to be building up the foam because what we're going to do next, once we've got all this foam in place and nice and tight and snug, we are going to take two of these Christmas trees from the Dollar Tree and we are going to turn it into a very high-end looking Christmas tree. Now I know I didn't show this Spanish moss at the very beginning, but I love this stuff and I think it's a great filler and I think a lot of people have this in their craft room. So I just thought I would share that you don't have to do this option. You could honestly put at the bottom whatever you want to conceal that foam. But I like using a little bit of that moss in there because I just think it adds that pretty Christmas texture in there that you would see at the bottom of a Christmas tree out in nature. Now I'm going to take these two trees that are a dollar from the Dollar Tree, well a dollar twenty-five now, and I'm going to pop off the bottoms and we don't need the supports and what we're going to do is we are going to take these two trees and flatten out their branches so that we can zip tie them together. Once we've got it zip tied nice and snug at the bottom, kind of a little bit above the bottom, a couple branches up, I'm gonna zip tie that there with a black zip tie. You can also get those at the Dollar Tree. And then I'm gonna come up almost all the way to the top of where the rod is inside that the branches are all tied to. Zip tie it there as well so it's nice and snug. Now the reason why I like doubling up these trees is it just overall makes it look a lot thicker, more fuller, more high-end. One tree by itself you could do it, 
but I just always think it looks kind of skimpy and I don't like it as much. So then I'm going to just work that down into the foam and you can see how that moss in there really is just concealing the foam so you don't see it and it just makes it look so beautiful. Then at this point I'm just going to fluff it and it's ready to be displayed in your home for Christmas. All right, this next project, I'm taking three of the stacking block toys from the Dollar Tree and I am going to glue them so they stay in the form of the tall tower. Now, the easiest way to do this is I'm just simply taking glue, zigzagging back and forth and continuing that pattern, gluing them on layer by layer until I get to the very top. Now, the reason why we're gonna need three of these stacking block toys is because we are going to be making three different individual figurines for Christmas. The very first one we're going to be using all of the blocks completely. For the second one we are going to almost use them all but leave six behind, six rows, because those six rows are going to be added on to the third one. So we will be able to have a small, medium, and large of these stacking blocks. And it is going to be able to just do the cutest project ever. So once you've got all of those glued and locked into place, you can see the three different sizes, go ahead and paint all three of them a nice coat of white paint. Now I'm really just kind of gooping it in there because I want to make sure I fill in as much as the cracks as possible. And then once that's all dry, I'm going to take some brown paint and I'm going to start lightly brushing on my first layer of brown paint. This is to add a little bit more of a taupey color, but I still want that white popping through. Then we're going to come in with the next layer of brown paint and I'm getting a little bit heavier with my brush strokes, but you can see that I'm staying on the bottom rounded corners of this stacking tower and then only on the corners of it. And this is because I want to keep the white in the middle really showing through. Then I'm coming back in for my third layer of brown paint and I'm really at this point starting to cake on quite a bit more and I'm even bringing in my finger to dabble on some more. Now at this point I set it aside, it's dry, I use my dry heat gun to dry it really quickly and I'm going to take this round wood piece and I'm going to paint it red. This particular stacking tower is going to be our Rudolph. Once the red nose is complete, go ahead and just glue that on. Not so much in the middle, just a little bit higher. And then I went outside, I found a couple of twigs that I thought looked really great like antlers, and I'm just going to glue those into place. This part is so fun. When you start to bring all the personality to these stacking towers, they just become so adorable. Now I've got these little wood round half bumps and I just picked those up from Hobby Lobby and I'm going to just simply paint two of them black. This is going to become the eyes for our Rudolph. Once the eyes have been painted black and they're dry, go ahead and glue them into place. Be careful not to put too much glue. It will push out on the sides, which is what I had happen here. And then I'm gonna just take the back of my brush and add on two little white dots for its eyes. And then I'm going to create like a frosty look at the top of Rudolph's nose. So I'm gonna add on a couple little dots in different sizes. And then this kind of shiny, it's a dot and I'm dragging in a little bit. It adds a little bit of a shiny glare so it looks like the nose is rounded more. Once that's all drying and done, I'm gonna move on to the top of Rudolph's head and I'm gonna add on some of this brown mossy grass that I get from the Dollar Tree. It is extremely messy, but I love this stuff for Christmas decorating and I just think it's so cute. All right, now we're gonna put Rudolph to the side and we are gonna move on to Frosty. Frosty the Snowman. Again, I apologize, my voice is so hoarse in this video. I wish it was not, but 
I've taken about a week trying to get it to heal and it is just taking a lot longer than I had thought and I just decided I'm gonna get back to filming because friends crafting is so therapeutic for me so here's hoping that this video and doing these projects just helps my voice clear up a little bit more who knows anyway I'm just gonna take some cute fabric you can customize whatever fabric you want and I'm just going to wrap it around the top of the stacking blocks for our Frosty the Snowman. I'm gonna use some red yarn, wrap it around, tie a knot, cut those extra long strands off I don't want, and then the very top of his little beanie cap, I'm gonna just take my scissors and cut and fray it some. I want it to look really floofy. Floofy, there's a word for you that I like to use actually quite a bit. <laughs> anyway, so I'm just gonna cut in some little snips on the top of that and once that is all in place I'm gonna go ahead and take three more of those half round circles and paint them black glue them into place for Frosty's coal and then with my white burlap I cut a thin strip and I wrapped it around like a scarf and now remember burlap really does let that hot glue pop right through so sometimes you might want to use a finger protecting guard from hot glue or a popsicle stick to push it down into place so you don't burn your hand. Now I'm going to take my thin brush and I'm going to paint on kind of a goofy smile. You can see that there's this little piece of burlap that is kind of rubbing funny into the spot and I was trying really hard to not have it drag and I was trying to like remove it and then there's this one point where I try to cut it and it's still there so then eventually I go back to try to paint it again and it's still there. <laughs> At this point I find it and I pop it out and it's gone. So just know that I have my moments where things kind of go wrong with my DIYs too and I just I stay patient and calm until I get it to work. Then I'm going to give him some eyes, and at this point we need to give him a nose. I went and got one of these long skewer sticks, and I'm going to just simply cut down a piece that I think is the right length for his nose. And then once that's trimmed, I'm just going to glue it into the spot that I want it to be. And I do go back later to paint it orange, but I did forget to add that part in. So just know that I did do a burnt orange color for the carrot nose. Now at this point, Frosty needs some arms, and I happen to have a large pile of really cute sticks outside my craft door because I work down in my basement and it's right next to my gardening area. So I went on out there, I found some cute twigs for his arms, and I glued them into place. Now at this point, I added a couple little berries and some moss at the top of his head and it just looks so cute. Now again, I'm gonna put that one to the side because now we're moving on to the third one. The third one is going to be Santa. Now if you don't have beige, a creamy color on hand, all you gotta do is just take white, a little bit of brown, and a little bit of orange, and it will make beige. So at this point, I'm going to do another one of those round circles. This is going to be Santa's face, and I'm going to glue it into place. And you can see that I'm almost towards the top of that stacking block because Santa's going to be nice and tall. This is the tallest of the three. Rudolph is the shortest. Frosty Frosty's the second, the middle, and Santa's the tallest. Now at this point, I'm just painting on some red stripes. You do not have to make this look perfect. Those red stripes, you want them to be where you can see the white down the middle, but you can tell that I kept it rough because I wanted to kind of go with this rustic charm of this video and this particular project. So you can see that my red line is not perfect and that's okay. Now I'm gonna take some ticking stripe fabric. I'm going to glue that onto place that I want it to be. And then I'm going to just take it and wrap it around. You want to make sure your sand is nice and straight before you start wrapping the fabric. And then I'm going to just take it, wrap it around the back, and glue that all into place. And then what we're going to do, this next part, it's not really tricky, but I'm going to try to show you as clearly as I can just so that you can see what I did. So I'm going to glue this last part into place. 
And then the fabric at the top, we're not going to cut it. We want it to be a little bit long. I'm going to take it, I'm going to pinch it, and I'm going to twist it and pull it down to the side. This is going to create that part of Santa's hat that's hanging over to the side of his head. And then in a few minutes, we're going to add on the little fuzzy pom-pom ball at the end. And I'm just going to just kind of work with the hat, move the fabric around so that I get that nice rounded curve at the top. Now I'm going to add on another one of those half circles and I'm going to paint that the beige color as well, this taupey color, not taupey but a tan color. I'm going to add on two little dots for the eyes and again there is a little piece of burlap. You can see it right there when I pull it. Oh, it made Santa look angry. I kind of laughed at this point. And then I just took my tan color and I went back in and tapped it. So again, things happen here on my channel that don't always work out perfectly. And I just stay calm and patient until I get it to resolve the problem. And now I'm going to just add some dots down Santa Claus's tummy for the buttons. And now at this point, I think this is probably my favorite part of the Santa. I'm taking some more of that white burlap and I cut out two rough looking beards. I want them to look rough. One's a little bit smaller than the other one. I'm also going to make sure that my dots are really dried because you do not want the burlap to bump those and then smudge them. So once those are dry, I'm going to add some hot glue and you can see the shape of this beard. I did not trace it, I just was kind of freehanding it. There's a scoop in the middle and then kind of a point to make that beard look. And now I'm just gonna smush that on there so that it looks like Santa's beard. And where it gets cute is when you add on the second beard. The first one is a little too see-through. I didn't like that and I knew I wanted to add a second one. And I'm just trimming up the sides to make sure the sides are extra pointy on this one. And then at this point, isn't it just so adorable? I love this little beard. It is so cute. If you're thinking of making a Santa, try doing a burlap beard. I think it is just adorable. Now I'm going to take some of this fuzzy fabric. I'm going to wrap that around at the base of the hat, right above Santa's eyes. And I do want it to kind of go down into the beard area to conceal that side a little bit. And then I'm going to just simply wrap it around to the back, cut off any extra that I don't need, and then glue it all into place. Now for the ball, I'm taking a little ball scrap piece of the fabric. I put it in the middle of this rectangle shaped fabric and I'm, I'm doing it so it makes it a little bit thicker. And I'm just going to keep working with the fabric and pulling it tight and pinching it to make it look like a ball as much as possible. You could make a yarn pom-pom ball, but honestly, that's a lot of work and this is much easier. So once I'm done, I'm going to take that little pom-pom and add that to the side where I twisted the fabric down. Now at this point, Santa needs a little bit of an embellishment, so I'm adding on some greenery and some cute berries. And then... Now we can leave these like this. They are all so cute. Or we can add a little frost. I know that not everybody loves glitter, so skip this part if you don't like it. But friends, I love a traditional country Christmas. So I'm going to add some Mod Podge, a nice thick goopy amount on all three of them in their own different areas. And then I'm going to come in with a chunky glitter. And again, skip this part if you don't like it. If you want to avoid the glitter, I totally get it. I will not say anything about it. We, are still, we will still be friends. But I love a little glitter. So I'm adding it to the top of Santa's hat, the bottom of Frosty the Snowman, and then also to the top of Frosty's hat. And then on Rudolph, I'm going to do it to the top of the nose and the antlers. And I, I like the two different glitters because I feel like you've got that chunky glitter and then the frosted um, sprinkle glitter where it's just it's sugar glitter. That's what it's called. Sugar glitter together combined. They just look so cute. The Mod Podge is going to dry clear 
and then you're going to have this beautiful sparkle on these specific parts. It looks like they're out in the snow, having a good time during the Christmas season. Now all together they make the cutest set. You can do them individually, but I just loved all three of them together. So once I've got my last of my glitter on, everybody is frosted. They are all ready to be displayed together. So whether you make one or three, I hope you enjoy this one. For this craft, we're going to be using some nautical rope, some that's already been untwisted, and some that's twisted, some greenery, some ticking stripe fabric, white burlap, which is actually my favorite to work with around the Christmas season, two gold jingle bells, and then one of these frosted berry picks. All of these things have come from the Dollar Tree, except for the fabric. Now, I'm going to take my white burlap, and I'm going to layer it about six times so that when I do this little hand cut out you can see here that I'm just tracing around my hand with a sharpie marker to create a mitten pattern and I want to be able to create six of them at the same time so I'm just gonna cut the fabric and I'm making it where you know the edges don't have to be perfect because we wanted to have that rustic country charm so we're just cutting off any extra that's bulky and causing any issues to cut it and then once I've got those all cut out I'm gonna need six of them because I like to take three for one side and three for the other mitten the other side and the reason why I do this is because burlap itself has a little bit of a hole to it it's woven really loosely and so sometimes the batting pops through so I make sure that I'm putting the batting towards the back side of those two gloves so the front side has two gloves to kind of prevent the batting from wanting to poke through. Now I'm just gluing it together and massaging the burlap to make sure that it's nice and glued so that it's not coming apart on the sides and once I've got that done I glued the two gloves together. You can see that I've kind of brought one down a little bit lower than the other one and then I added in some greenery and now I'm adding on with that untwisted nautical rope left over from another project. I'm just tying that around to cinch up the wristband of the glove. Now you could leave it like this, but I really love the idea of fraying it, just making it look more rustic country charm for Christmas. And then I'm just going to glue them down in place because I like things to stay where I put them. Now I'm going to go ahead and take my nautical rope that's still twisted and I'm going to glue that inside of the two gloves and the reason why I love that is because we'll be able to hang it up somewhere on a hook or a doorknob or a door whatever you want to put it on and now I'm just going to add in some of these berries I think the berries bringing in that pop of red with green just has that traditional beautiful Christmas look to it so once I've got that in place going to add on those two gold jingle bells and I'm just using hot glue. I like to make sure that when I do glue with metal there is some kind of an opening on the metal to be able to get the glue in to lock all into place. So the part where you can add some string, I'm putting glue into that hole and then putting the bells on the glove. Now at this point you can leave it as is but again I'm going for that country rustic primitive charm I'm going to go ahead and just distress these with some brown paint I'm just lightly brushing it on going back over adding on several different layers and then for the bells to give it a rustic look I'm just simply taking some of that brown paint and tapping it on certain spots and corners and adding some to that greenery pick 
Now, the last thing I'm going to do is add some frost. I'm taking Mod Podge and I'm just tapping a nice thick clumpiness of it onto the gloves on the spots that frost or snow would fall on them. And I'm adding first a chunkier glitter and then I'm adding a sugar glitter. This really just makes it look so beautiful and frosty. All right, we're gonna use five of these wood planks and as well as eight of these squares. We are gonna be creating a beautiful high-end wood box that you can use honestly for pretty much anything. I'm gonna be using it as a table decor piece where I'm gonna put beautiful red berries in it for this Christmas season. So I'm starting by taking four of the squares, I glued them to one of the planks right in their corners and now I'm using that as a support system to glue to glue on the sides. Once I've got those four around the side I'm now going to take the last four squares and I'm going to glue those right into the box. Now you could use some other things besides the wood squares. I knew that I wasn't going to be looking at the inside of the box so I ended up using the wood squares for really strong supports. If you wanted to use this as like a gift box you could take these wooden dowels and use those as supports in the middle that would work too. So you can see here that I'm cutting down those craft wooden sticks for supports on the side and to cover up that seam where the wood doesn't perfectly line up and now I'm going to paint it all white to give it a nice pretty fresh Christmas look. Once that's done, I'm going to put some foam inside of that box glued into place and I'm going to add in these berries. I had a couple people ask me, how do I store these berries? I actually have what I call a flower tower. It's this huge tower. I'll show it in my craft room tour that's coming very soon. And I just store them out in the open all year long. And then if they get dusty at all, I just dust it over really quick. But really, it doesn't do that. Now, if any of the berries pop off, I do like to take a little bit of red paint. And I just tap the tops of those spots where the foam might be showing. And it looks brand new again. So that's how I store my berries. At this point, I've added a ticking stripe fabric bow around it. Found an old ornament that I had on hand from the Dollar Tree. And this looks so high-end and so beautiful to put out for Christmas. This project is so whimsical and darling to have in your home, especially if you love snowmen. I'm gonna take three of these planks. Using my crocodile, I'm gonna punch some holes out. On two of the planks, I'm gonna do four, one in each corner. And then on the third plank, I'm only gonna punch out two holes on the same side. So you can see here, two is on this one and the other ones have four. At this point, I'm going to go ahead and paint these all white. Now, if you wanted to make a really cool gift, at this point, you could ditch the idea and not do a snowman. You could end up doing a really beautiful display of family photos on these wood planks or something with really neat sayings that are memorable and special to you and your family as a gift for a loved one. Now, I'm going to use some wire I'm going to fasten those holes together. You can see here that they are all situated where the very last one doesn't with the missing those extra holes. That's the very bottom because we want that to be nice and clean where there's not another one that's jointing together. And then on the other side where there's the extra holes, that's going to be where we have our hang up wire to be able to hang it up on a hook, a wall, a Christmas tree, whatever you want. 
So I ended up using wire. You could use twine. You could use embroidery thread. You can use a lot of different things to combine these holes all together. Once I've got all my wire in place, I'm going to go ahead and do a little bit of distressing first. You could always skip the distressing. I know it's kind of hit and miss for a lot of people, but I like a little distressing. I'm going to add on the two cute eyes, some dots for the coal smile, and for the carrot nose, I didn't want to just do a straight line across like you can see sometimes in decor. I made it a little bit more rough and bumpy looking. I thought that was a really cute detail, made the carrot look a little more dimensional. Now I'm going to take some of these darling wood cutouts that are snowflakes. I thought that this was such a fun touch to put on our little snow person we're making here. And I'm going to just add on Mod Podge after I've got those glued in place. And this is going to allow us to bond on my glitter I've been using a lot this season. I picked this glitter up at Walmart. I had a lot of people asking me over this last couple of weeks. It's in their craft section. It's a sugar glitter and a chunkier glitter. And those two combined make the most beautiful frosty texture. You can see that I added some of that Mod Podge to the buttons and as well to certain sides of my little snow person, snowman, and the top of the carrot nose. Once those are all done, I'm going to add on a bow. You can use any kind of bow you want to match your decor. I really love the red and white for Christmas time, so I'm using this ticking stripe fabric. And then after that, and all of the glitter has been put in place, you really can customize this however you want and just have fun with it. This project is so darling and just perfect for the Christmas season if you're looking for an easy craft. I'm going to take one square wood plank, three of the tumbling stacking blocks, two wooden beads, one half round bead, and then two popsicle sticks. It's amazing how you can take a whole bunch of nothing and turn it into something. I really love that about crafting. So I'm taking my crocodile, I punched two holes, and now I'm going to create the roof of our little manger scene that we're going to turn into the most beautiful ornament. So I'm going to take that first popsicle stick, I cut it at an angle, and now I'm going to just line it up with the other one until I get the peak of the roof that I really desire the look of. I'm going to take my pencil, draw the line so that when I go to glue these together they fit nicely. And again, whenever I cut wood with scissors, I'm using really dull scissors. Do not use your best fabric scissors. It will just tear them up. Now at this point, I've glued on my roof. I've painted it. I've put on my tumbling blocks. I've painted Joseph a nice slate gray. Mary, a really pretty mauve color. Baby Jesus, a little golden color. And then I've put on all of their heads. Now at this point, you really could stop there, but friends, I just can't help myself sometimes. I love this moss. I've said it so many times. I just glued some on and I'm trimming it down so it's not so crazy. I like the look of it being kind of tidy. So now I'm going to take some of this really pretty soft gray color to create the night sky and some shading around this little nativity scene. And once I've got that done, I decided to add some little white dots for the starry night. And I'm going to take some wire, those holes we punched earlier. This is how we're going to turn it into an ornament. I took some wire, I wrapped it around my craft night because I love that coiled look of wire. I feel like it's just so farmhouse cute. I don't know. I, I personally really like how coiled up wire looks and it reminds me of some cute decor I had around my house growing up with my mom. So I'm going to just take that, stretch out that coiled up wire, loop it through that hole we punched with the crocodile and twist it into place on both sides. Now I'm going to add a little star button because, oh my word, it's just such a cute little detail and touch. Add a bow because I love my bows. And then at this point, I'm just going to simply come in, add a little brown paint on that wire because it adds that rustic look to it. You don't have to do this part. And you could even put like some string or ribbon, but either way, it's such a cute project to try.
I had this idea pop in my head. I thought, how cute would it be if I took these square planks and I turned them into a stack of tumbling Christmas presents. So I'm taking one of these wood bases that a plaque that you can get from the Dollar Tree in their wood section. I drilled down two holes just to make the sticks a little stronger and I glued them into place. Then I took these three squares. I painted one a really bright fun green, one white, and then the other one I'm putting on white burlap and cutting it down so you have this really pretty texture on the wood. I really love how that turned out. Once the glue is dried on my wood base and my sticks that are gonna have the presents go up it, so this looks very store high-end looking, I'm gonna paint that all black and then set it aside again. Now I'm gonna take the back of my brush and some black paint and I'm gonna create a really cute staggered polka dot look on one of the presents. There was something about doing this that reminded me of like Kate Spade. I don't know what it is, but I just, I love polka dots and I thought this was a really fun detail to that present in particular. Then you can see at this point that I'm adding on some bows to my presents. This is gonna add all kinds of fun texture and you really could customize this however you want. On the front of my burlap present, I'm going to add this pretty green silky ribbon and a little bow right in the middle. And then on the polka dot, I'm going to add the red ribbon by wrapping it around and adding a big bow to the top. And the green present, I used some ticking stripe fabric that I had on hand that I've been using all this Christmas season. And then I'm going to add a little wreath right tucked underneath that big red bow. I think these three presents are so adorable. You really could customize them to whatever your home decor colors are. At this point, I'm going to start by gluing on the middle present first, because I'm gonna kind of make it off-centered. You can see that it's tilted and tipping over to the side like a stack of presents just kind of going wonky and tumbling all over the place. Then I put on the bottom present, and then the last, I'm trimming up the bow once I knew the length I wanted for the top present, and I'm gonna twist that to the other side. I really love the idea of them going back and forth, kind of twisting, making them look very topsy-turvy for a cute stack of presents. Now at this point, because I like the farmhouse look, I'm gonna come in and distress it a little bit. Nothing too crazy, but I love that different dimension to that distressed look. You could leave it as is and not do the distressing. I'm going to take some green garland, twist two of them together. These are those ties that you can use to add up your garland to like a banister, a mantle. You use them to twist things together. I'm going to use those to wrap around the bottom of my cute stand that I have here. Add on some darling pine cones to the top red bow and down to the base. And at this point, friends, this was so much fun to make. Christmas is such a magical time of year celebrating the Savior's birth and gathering together with your loved ones, bringing in those traditional colors. I hope that this video inspired you for your home and your crafts this Christmas season. Thank you so much for stopping in to visit with me today. Don't forget to click the subscribe button. I'm going to recommend this video right here. If you like this one, you might like this one as well. And until the next episode, bye friends.